So if you can just see it come up on your screen, the first poll is about compliance documentation. And um, you know, is your, I'm launching it now, please go ahead and quickly answer the three questions and then we'll see what the results is. Um, results are, is your business tax compliant? Are you compliant with all regulations um, and the bylaws in the industry? And does your business have annual financial statements? So if people can go ahead and answer that, I'll give it a few minutes. Um, and while, we, while we're doing that poll in the background, I wanna address a quick question to each of you. So Hanif, Sean and Bongo so you can put your camera on and then we can all be visible to people. Um, you know, government generally by default can take long with applications. And so can you tell me, you know, what are the hurdles that application that applicants need to avoid in order for this not to take so protracted and, say, and take so long, you know? So Sean, can I start with you? I see you on my top left of my screen here. What, what, what's your advice to, to help people make sure that this doesn't take so long, you know? Um, yeah, Rashid, um, good question. I think, um, yeah, the, it really comes down to the quality of the information, you know, um, the credibility of the information. I think because we, we are, we, we are, we are deal makers. So we have to implement a policy. We're not policy makers. Uh, as DFIs, you know, with my counterparts here, we are the implementers of these funds. So we are the deal makers. So what information we receive, we normally have to look at how credible are the information and how reliant is the information. And um, my, my, my really my encouragement to entrepreneurs is, you know, build an ecosystem, you know, build an ecosystem that you can tap into. Whether it's, I know with certain consultants and professionals, it costs funding, but there are a lot of platforms now where I see there's a lawyers and accountants on those platforms. Form part of it, build stakeholder relationships in your business, you know, work with the right guys. And I think that will also in, uh, open up, you know, um, you know, the capabilities for you to, 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 to be able to present your information more credible because once we have received information that's not credible, it's up and down the whole time, you know, trying to figure yeah, out yeah. what's the, yeah. so, so that's normally the challenge for us. We so, tend to underestimate how, um, how, how difficult, I mean, how, how, how networks, you, you take it for granted, you assume you have a network, but not everybody has that natural network, you know? Mm. So, yeah. Cool, yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, sorry, go yeah. ahead, Sean, go ahead. No, 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 I'm just saying what I've learned, you know, I have family and friends and, you know, previous colleagues, you know, that went into entrepreneurship. And I can tell you now that the guys, the difference, because a lot of them failed, I mean, at running their own businesses. And a lot of them also become very, very successful. And the difference, the ultimate difference between, you know, a successful and, you know, an entrepreneur that's still building the business is really how far you can really network you know how how relationships you can build for your business you know so if and it's and i mean it's a skill that, that, that that's learned you know you can learn it it's not something that everybody's born with but if you really like what you are doing and you're passionate about what you are doing you can always talk about your product and that's how networking actually starts so uh so it's, it's yeah, something absolutely. that you do understand it's not natural but uh I think it's it's definitely a skill that, that 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 if you are passionate about your business and the product that you are selling, goods or services, um, it should come naturally to you if somebody asks you about your business. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I've just I'm going to go to you next, Hanif, to answer the same question. I've just I've just seen the poll has been answered by 64% of you. So I'm going to share the results. Just just confirm that you can can you see those results. Um, so, so yeah, ninety-one percent of people say they are tax compliant. Don't know if you guys agree. <laughs> if that's your experience, are you compliant with the rules and bylaws in your industry? Another ninety-one percent. Does your business have annual financial statements? Seventy-nine percent. I personally know when I had a business, it was it was like a sometimes a thirty thousand rand experience to go and get an auditor. So you you, you tend to not get audited. But those are the little things you have to deal with. And if so, you know, yeah, so you can see the answers there. Yeah, 20% say they're independently reviewed, 18% they audited. So it's interesting just to see what other people are doing. Thank you, everybody, for, 
for, for, for adding to that webinar, I mean, to that poll. I shall, I shall just switch that off for now. Hanif, you, your answer to that question about how these things can take long, how do you avoid it being, how do you avoid, what are the hurdles people must avoid? Yeah, I think just on the compliance issue, obviously very important, tax compliance. Um, we, if you're not tax compliant, um, we consider that as a fatal flaw. So you wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be able to provide uh, funding. So I'm gonna answer it like this, right? From an IDC perspective, um, we can, it's easier for us to process a billion rand application than a 15 million rand, uh, rand application. And you may ask why, right? Because a large company will have, will tick all the boxes, right? They usually come with transaction advisors. They've got the right information that we need. Um, they've got um, sophisticated financial models and, and so, so it's almost like a plug in into our systems. We obviously have to vet that information, but uh, um, it's easier from a deal making perspective in terms of a meeting of minds between IDC deal makers who are generally chartered accountants or engineers, and that of a large, say, mining company who have their own chartered accountants, engineers, and on top of it, uh, business advisors from, say, one of the top five uh, 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 firms like, say for example, at KPMG, McKinsey. When it comes to small business, and, and I think Sean, uh, um, uh, um, yeah, I, I think Sean uh, um, elaborated well on this, it's the information, right? We, uh, most of the time when we, when we get the application, it, it's, it's very difficult to, uh, um, 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 to make a, a quick assessment. Um, so we, we'd have to go, go through that information step by step. So we'll get the first batch of information. We look through it. We see there's a lot of missing uh, um, um, stuff. We then uh, go back to the entrepreneur. It takes him a while. And, and, uh, um, um, and then he gets back to us eventually and, and so forth. So, but, so how do we overcome that problem? Um, it's not an easy problem to overcome. We, we're grappling with it internally in the IDC and what we are trying to, 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 to sort of look at now is to segment uh, um, the types of information that we, uh, uh, we require uh, um, in terms of an application. So for example, if you have a, a contract from Woolworths to manufacture juice, right? And Woolworths has, has given you a contract uh, uh, um, it's signed on the dotted line. Do we then really need to look at all the other stuff that that we uh, would require? So that uh, um, um, we we, we want to move to a situation where we we don't uh, um, request unnecessary information. We can we can uh, um, respond quickly uh, to entrepreneurs where where uh, there's comfort. For example, that you're tax compliant. Uh, um, we have comfort in the contract that you're uh, providing to us and we can take a quicker decision. When it comes to, for example, a startup, it's a completely different story. There, unfortunately, we, we would have to do a, a much more in-depth analysis. But I think that you're gonna address in another question. So, so I will stop there for now. I, I just wanted to add, um, I do think uh, our, as institutions, we, we could probably do a bit better uh, um, in, adapting our processes to respond uh, better to entrepreneurs. And especially nowadays with all the FinTech uh, uh, that, uh, um, that's available, we could, and, and we're looking into this, uh, perhaps use some of those kinds of uh, technologies for us to be more responsive to entrepreneurs. Thanks. I got you. Musa, what's, you, what's your reply? And uh, we don't have to answer these questions separately. I mean, it's just, how, what are the hurdles we have to avoid? And maybe I can ask you the second question, people, you know, why are people sometimes um, unsuccessful? You know, what advice can you give people against those kind of, where their applications are unsuccessful? Right, so um, thank you again. Um, uh, the most, um, uh, you know, uh, common um, the problem that we identify, uh, I'm sure my colleagues will also attest to this, um, is uh, is that um, when applicants come to us, uh, they 
they come to us um, with a proposal that has not necessarily uh, that does not necessarily confirm uh, you know access to markets and that becomes a huge um, uh, issue in in our space because we provide our uh, our funding is not normally secured funding much like you would find with the banks where they would fund one to one uh, you know against security most of the funding that we provide as development finance institution is largely unsecured and because of that, we have to make sure as at the point of lending that the business will in fact be able to generate the revenues that they are saying that they will, uh, they, 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 they will generate through their financial projections. And, um, you know, and, and from those profits, they will be able to cover the expenditure that they have identified and therefore will be able to repay the loan. Now, the, the most important thing in our, on our side when it comes to the analysis, it is now to prove or to confirm that those assertions made in those financial projections are in fact true or verifiable at, at the least. So for an example, lending to a business that has um, you know, contracts um, with clients, it becomes easier because now you can look at that contract and you will be able to uh, assess whether or not the, 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 the provisions of the contract, the terms of the contract, allow for that business to generate that uh, projected revenue. In um, cases where businesses don't have contracts, you have then uh, the other you know, option of proving the market is uh, you provide market studies. Um, and those market studies would have to be very detailed and we have to be um, uh, you know, uh, as, as, uh, as close to the truth as possible. So it shouldn't be a thumbs up kind of an information. And unfortunately, we do see that kind of uh, you know, that, that, uh, um, you know, um, output coming from, uh, you know, different uh, service providers in the industry. It's unfortunate, it's there, it happens. And, and unfortunately, it, we end up not being able to fund a business that would otherwise have been funded if the, you know, the financial, uh, sorry, the, uh, the market, market, market analysis information that was provided was um, of a, a better quality. So those are the are the main things um, you know that yeah. um, that cause um, us yeah. to decline applications. Obviously, there's quite a few things that are linked to all of this uh, compliance issues with all of the you know um, um, the, the matters that were identified by my colleagues uh, previously. They will also talk to it because if you're lending to a business that will uh, sell food guess what, you need to talk to the municipalities and get those food um, uh, handling licenses. If you are building a hotel, you need building plans. You know, you can't come to me without having, um, you know, uh, at least drafted building plans yeah. and cost it in so that we are able to see what the actual cost of this particular structure is gonna be before we actually start the process. So those are the kind of things um, that I can just speak to briefly. Thanks, Bongo. So just, just put your check if your phone's on mute because we're getting pings. Um, Bongo, so while I've got you, I just want to ask you because we're in a we're in a live chat here. Somebody asked, um, I believe you have a taxi relief fund to mitigate COVID. Can you the NEF, David Drummond asked that question. Can you quickly answer that one for me? All right. So um this this is a um uh, an initiative of the Department of Transport. Um, so the National Empowerment Fund are more the implementers of, of this program. Um, and so far, we've been working with the uh, uh, National Department of, of Transport um, with the aim of getting to a point where our systems are able to talk to their systems and talk to the, uh, the, the CIPC system so that we can then implement. So um, we will be implementing this, um, you know, uh, later this year. If I, if um, I'm not mistaken, I think the launch will be um, around um, the 26th or, or earlier this month, um, uh, and then uh, and then it will be uh, properly launched. So it is too early for for me to speak to that. Um, I, you know, the information that I'm basically giving is because I happen to be working with the team that's implementing it. Thank you for the update. It's, it's nice to just hear it straight from you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So I want to go, just go back to Sean and Hanif. Hanif, um, do you, did you have any more things to add if I were to ask you why people are unsuccessful? Or do you think you've covered that? What, what are the common reasons why people are unsuccessful when they apply to you as the IDC? If I can make a sort of a rough guesstimate, uh, I read a lot of business plans uh, that we get at our offices, right? Probably two out of 10 
we could uh, really seriously consider. The rest are not well considered um, in terms, particularly in terms of one aspect. Does it make sort of business sense? If you think about your business plan, right? So, so if, you, if you're an entrepreneur, right? So a, a lot of entrepreneurs, when they come to us, they say, fund me because I say, I'm saying it's gonna work. <laughs> But a funder doesn't look at it that way, right? So you, the, we look at it quite differently. We look at the, the viability, right? We, we, uh, um, we look at what the, 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 the sort of logic or the sense that you've put into that business plan. Does it make sense to us, right? Um, I remember seeing one where um, it was a startup company, uh, um, small, and within the first year, they were going to have 300 million rand in revenues. <laughs> now, obviously, we spend a lot of money doing research and industries and so forth. And um, that would really not be feasible. If it were, a lot of people would obviously enter that industry. So I think when entrepreneurs come to us, I, I think the first question they have to uh, um, um, ask themselves, right? What is this business plan trying to tell a funder? Does it? Uh, um, um, provide comfort, would it provide comfort to a funder that this is a credible business plan? And one way you can do that, right? Let other people read it. Before you come to IDC or uh, 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 any events, go to, maybe to see them and ask them, read my business plan, does it make sense to you, right? Or if you have family that's accountants or relations that are accountants, let them read it for you, right? Um, mm -hmm. Then, the other issue is um, a fatal flaw, right? And this is a lot driven by compliance issues. If you in agriculture, you have to have a water license. If you like Bonga Musa said, if you in food, you have to have local municipality. If you don't have those things, right? We can't fund you because we, we would get audit findings uh, against ourselves, right? And, um, but generally, uh, and this is just my experience, about two out of 10, I think uh, when we get business plans is what we can uh, work with. No, I hear you, thank you. And, and just a quick question to you, Hani, from David John. Um, can I, that do you assist, would you be able to assist a media startup? To, does that qualify for business support? Just a quick answer. We don't have to go into detail because you yeah, can we, always we reach out we, to the we, guy we, directly. We yeah. do have a media section, but um, we uh, obviously um, I've, I've posted my details. You can just contact me and then we can discuss it further. No problem. Cool. And then, Sean, back to you. I mean, again, yeah. we, this, this issue of the network comes up again, but why, why in your case are people unsuccessful? What would you give people advice? I think, yeah, I think generally, um, okay, in the, in the DFI space, remember with the IDC NEF, we thought of the, the younger the younger brother of the, the youngest brother of the, so by our very nature, you know, we, we, we have to take a little bit more risk in the IDC and the NEF. So, so from our side, we try to really to make deals work, you know, each and every application, you know, we, we try to look for that viability in the deal, but generally I would, I would, you know, I would, I would definitely, you know, confirm that, you know, the biggest, the two biggest things is, is really character, you know. Um, character risk is probably our biggest risk, you know. And it goes along with a few things, whether you come to CIFA and you have a judgment, you know. We would like, you know, we would like to see how you have acted or you have a default, you know. Have you went back to the, you know, have you went back to your creditors, you know, try to make an arrangement just to show that, you know, we have comfort in you and honoring your agreements with us. You know, so um, also in character, it's your capability, you know. Um, do you have a specific expertise? You know, if you're gonna start a manufacturing plant, you know, have you build a team? You know, because sometimes I would, I actually prefer looking at team. Uh, entrepreneur, you know, he has the vision, but does he have a solid team that he has put together to execute on the business plan? So this all speaks to his character, acumen, you know. So we look really at the jockey, you know. For us, for me, the jockey is, is like, I, 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 I want to trust the entrepreneur. Honestly, I want to believe in the entrepreneur. I want to believe in his vision. And that's what they need to sell to us, you know. What will they do if this business, you know, 
go through a hump, will they show character, you know, and pull it through? And then the second thing, um, uh, Bongo Musa, Musa has actually highlighted, is really market, you know? Do you have a product that is acceptable to the market? And, you know, is it, is it really a competitive product? You know, are you priced well? You know, will there be uptake of your product? You know, so, so if, you, if, if, if there's not enough credibility behind your projection, you know, it's very difficult for us to put a financial model together that states that the business is viable. So I think these are two key things that I believe entrepreneurs should really, you know, invest in, you know, whether it's, you know, through networks or through some sort of training. But um, it's really about the character of the entrepreneur and I think of his market, the problem that he's really solving. Is this product really um, viable and, you know, is it relevant to the target market that is catering to? Thank you. So, Sean, just one of the questions from Sia Bonga Mini was, um, if, if I'm, I've got a business and I don't generate one million annually, I've been operating for three years, but I'm still, you know, just at 500K annually. Can't we apply for CIFA funding? Just a quick answer. Let's keep it short because I'm going to try and get yes, through yes, all no, these definitely. questions. You can, you can I mean, apply, uh, right? Yes. That's yes, the, 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 the quick answer is you can apply. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. And then, and then for, for all of you guys, I mean, everybody is one person, Keenan asks here, you always say go and get professional advice, but well, why can't this be, be some of the help that you provide? Like to help someone with these intricacies. That's the, that's the actual question. Um, because not everybody has that help, you know, that, that accountant friend or something like that. Anybody want to answer that briefly? The, the question asked by Keenan. All right. So, um, yeah, when it comes to that, uh, uh, I mean, we are development finance institutions. So as Sean has indicated earlier on, um, we are there to listen. So it's not, um, you know, one does not necessarily have to have, um, you know, a chartered accountant in the, you know, in their family in order for them uh, to, to know whether the opportunity that is in front of them is viable. Call us. Talk to one of our funders. We'll allocate somebody to uh, to, uh, to to speak to you. Um, in my case, I'm the one. Uh, in, in, uh, in the case of the NEF, I'm I'm the one as the regional manager that has the responsibility to provide guidance. You know where uh, where such guidance uh, is required, and in some cases, I will allocate. If it's something that we have dealt with before, then I'll allocate somebody to uh, to assist. But you know, as development finance institutions. We are required uh, by you know uh, our shareholders to handhold entrepreneurs and 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 assist them as they look at uh, different opportunities. Whether you are looking to acquire a business, we 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 step in to say, hey, this business is overpriced. Uh, you cannot uh, buy it. Um, we will not assist you, but also it's not a good idea for you to get involved in this. Uh, because of these points. Um, if you're looking to start a new business, we will still tell you, okay, for you to be able to, um, you know, to implement this uh, uh, business plan, this business uh, successfully, these are the things that you need to look at. Um, you know, obtain this from these people. And in cases where we know where, where certain things must be obtained, we are able to guide as well to say, you know, go to municipality and talk to them about these sort of things, go to this particular entity to talk about this and, and all of it. So we, it is our responsibility and we do carry out that responsibility. So entrepreneurs can call us uh, to get yeah. guidance. To get that kind of advice. No, I, I hear you. And I, can I, I, just, I, just, I, I know the others are going to answer. While I'm doing that, I want, I'm going to launch another poll, which is the poll asking you about startup funding. So please, we, we, we can double track here. While, while, while the poll's open, I'm just going to keep it open for like a minute. If you could please try and answer that, and then we'll we'll gauge what are some of the types of reasons why you need funding. Can everybody see that? I hope, I hope you can see the poll. Um, how much funding do you require approximately? Um, what will funding be used for? You know, machinery, debt, land. Do you have any proof of your market? So I've, I've launched that poll. I don't see anybody answering it, but uh, um, okay, there we go. So it is working. Sean, you were gonna answer, yeah? Or was it Khalid? Uh, John, go yes. for it. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'm echoing what Musa said, you know. Um, yeah, reach out to us, you know. Um, or drop us email, you know, email if you can't reach us on our 
on our lane line or mobile lines, you know, our our um, our email addresses is also available. So, but you know, try to speak to us, you know, in terms of any specific challenge that you have, and we are we are we will listen, you know, and we will look with our stakeholders, you know, how we can assist you and see if we can put you in touch with the relevant people. But what we are trying to say is, dear vice, you are not on your own. You know, uh, I think um, we are developmental, you know, financial institutions. So our mandate is different from the private sector and the banking. You know, our mandate is really to make sure that entrepreneurs with good market, good character, have financial support to grow the economy. So, um, so yeah. So that's, that's I hear that's you. My, 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 my yeah. Thing. Cool. Hanif, anything from your side? Just briefly. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I've posted my contact details. Um, I encourage anybody if they, they, they um, you know, have some issues that they want to discuss on their business plans specifically, we would be very happy to, to look into that and assist. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not wrapping up the webinar, I just meant in response to that, but it's fine. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to end this, this current poll we've had and I'll share the details. Just have a look at the panelists as well. Obviously, 97% of people say they need funding. I think that's why they're here. And here's how much funding people think they require. So it seems like, yeah, 36% of people sort of need that, that little, that, that, that sweet spot of between 250K to a million rand. 21% of people feel they need more than that, 19%. So now a whole 40% of people are saying they would be able to have require funding between one and five million. And, and just 7% say they're needing a small amount of funding, less than 100. Okay. And what are the funding needs for? This is, this is very valuable information for, for, for these um, speakers from the DFIs. But dominantly, people say for starting businesses, uh, well, not predominantly, 22%, 70% are saying it's for expanding. And that's my next question to the panel here. Um, and then here you can see what people need it for. Um, operating expenses, 62%, 29% say land and buildings, vehicles, machinery and equipment, 48% of people say that's it. And then do people have a proof of market? Um, yeah, it's, uh, just 89%, just 11% say they don't have a proof of market who's going to be buying their product. 